So I had to turn some drill rod uh, last week, make a couple of hardened pins for uh, for a company, and uh, I realized that I didn't have a spider on my machine. Uh, just a project I hadn't gotten around to making yet, and uh, so I came up with a quickie that was uh, a piece of Teflon with a bit of a taper on it and a hole board for the right size drill rod, and we just wedged this guy in there and did our turning and got through our job fine. Uh, but I think uh, I'm going to make myself uh, a spider for the uh, outboard end of the machine. Uh, so I've already went and relieved relieved the uh, fiberglass cover a bit and uh, to make room for it. So what I'm planning to do is make a uh, make a spider that's going to protrude through the cover and uh, screw onto the existing threads on the spindle here. And this is a metric 50 by 1.5, uh, so it shouldn't be too hard to uh, to thread this thing up. We'll make a little register that's going to fit and square it on this end, and uh, outboard we'll have our uh, adjuster bolts. So let's get started at it. Of course, I've had the uh, prerequisite uh, cartoon sketch uh, drawn up, uh, stuck on with a couple of our tactical key, key change time eggs, and. Uh, we have our uh, two and three quarter stock uh, dialed in in the chuck. Uh, first thing we do is uh, bore a hole through this thing. Let's get going here. We'll, uh, we'll get a center drill in here and then we're going to we'll run a one inch hole through there because uh, the spindle bore on this is inch and a half. So uh, we're going to start with uh, bored out to inch and a half. Then we're going to increase to 1.770 which is the register area on the back of the spindle. And then we'll uh, increase the diameter on this end to our uh, to our threading diameter. So we get this out and get in our one inch bit. So that was a one inch hole in a three inch depth. Uh, let's see if we can get, get a look at this thing here. No pilot hole, just a center drilled hole. And uh, I normally grind my taper, uh, taper drill bits with a split point. It's not that hard to do if you get it just right on both sides. And these guys are drilled really good. Okay, so that'll give us our three inch depth we need, plus a little bit for clearance. So I was having some chatter problems and of course I paused the camera and while I was trying to get this straightened away, uh, I forgot to hit the button of course. So we're at 1486 now, we're going to take off another 14, get us to our 1.5. Okay, so the next step of this is to uh, enlarge the bore up to 1.770 to use as a register for when it uh, screws on the back of the spindle. So we we'll should get a touch off here with our boring bar. And uh, we'll use our MagVac indicator to step off our distance. Lock the carriage here, reset our indicator. And set down to zero.
and we'll get to board. cut here now and get this done. Okay, so we do the same deal now for our thread minor diameter. Uh, touch off at the end here. Set up a zero. And cruise on in at three quarters of an inch. No, sorry, 600. So that'll be our zero point for our threads. So the minor diameter on our 50 mil thread here is 1896. So we'll just motor on it to, uh, to somewhere close to that and we'll take a measurement. Closer, so I just did a spring cut to uh, get a more accurate measurement. do some threading I guess. So this is the setup to do the internal metric thread on this uh, on this spider. Uh, what I've done is uh, I've elected to use my threading tool upside down. We're going to turn the uh, turn the lathe towards us and thread inwards to get a right handed thread. I've got my tool ground similar to this only a mirror image so that the point is going to give me as close as I can to the shoulder and uh, I've got uh, dashboard gauge set up uh, a la Mr. Fenner and we have a uh, mag base indicator down on the uh, on the bedway to uh, to set our depth and this is going to be a hoot I got you moved over to the uh, to the tailstock uh, camera mount so you can get to see it when I smash this tool into it and uh, we'll get going I guess. So the first thing we need to do here is set a zero. That's a zero on our cross slide. We've already got our compound set to zero and now we'll adjust our dashboard. on this thread at 0.614 times our pitch will give us uh, about 36 thousandths. So, we do those scratch pass. Of 
Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the jog button to, uh, to thread and uh, of course the foot brake to stop so I don't have to uh, let, go my, uh, let go my half nut. I hope I don't screw up. Okay, let's check our threads. See if we can sneak our 1.5 in here and have a look. Okay, so that, so that part we managed to get right. All we got to do is get it stopped in time. I'll drop her down slower. Yeah, I can probably live with that. Let's try 10. slide, we'll give it another five. So we are at 25, our thread depth was 36, so we'll go up to 30. Thread feels good. There's one burr at the very end of it where I stopped, but I'm going to uh, get inside after with a grooving tool and cut a thread relief in there after. So, might pull the chuck and uh, see how it fits on the end of that spindle. So we're going to put a, put a mark on our chuck and on our spindle. to ensure we wind up in the right place again when we put our truck back on. Now this is going to be a bit of a beast to test fit on the end, but we'll try it. Hello, child of mine. Mom, where did I get the snow pants? Ah, uh, downstairs, I guess. It's me and the boy, we're doing FaceTime now. <laughs> you know I'm recording you on YouTube? Say hello. Okay, so I got a little lazy and I jammed the rotary table and set the parallels inside the vise there and we're just going to do a quick uh, four hole pattern there at uh, 90 degrees apart.
Okay, so we'll buzz this around 90 degrees and do the same trick. Okay, so last hole. Let's get her back in line here. Okay, so I'm going to get a little end mill now and put a flat on uh, each of these for the nuts to uh, seed on when we tighten them down. Okay, so we're swapped out to a three-quarter. That's going to re-zero on this thing. And we'll try our 20,000s again. chips in there but that looks more along the lines of what we're looking for perhaps I'll give it another 10 thou and uh, and uh, go around to the whole series of them that way so I guess by now you're saying to yourself well what happened to the rest of the threading and uh, and the fitting up in this end and well we had a problem <laughs> uh, in order to check the threads on this, I cut them to depth, and uh, so I barked my chuck in relation to its D14 mount and pulled the whole chuck and all and tried to test fit it on here. Uh, measurements were all right, but when I get over to here, it would not, there's no way my register area would fit on over this. So I started to looking at it, and you know, I even tried. I figured, you know, the threads would start, would go tight, so I tried uh, a few extra thou on the threads and make sure that's not the problem. And it turns out it wasn't the problem. I'm going to grab a dial indicator and we'll show you what was the problem. So now, I didn't buy this lathe brand new. It was a year and a half, ish, two years old. Uh, there's an old gen gentleman that bought it. He wanted to try it and uh, just decided he wanted to sell the machine again. So, so I bought it from him and uh, I just assumed everything was in great shape. So when I did my measurement here, I had measured in close to the threads to get my diameter. It turns out that out at the outside end, that this thing had been bell-mouthed quite a bit. Now, I'm starting to wonder now if uh, he hadn't had an accident from not using a spider before. So, well, when I checked the run out in here, inside is great. And I had to take a file uh, with the machine running and try to trim this down equal diameter in here. So it took a while, a bit of fiddling around, and uh, well, we did get it to a roughly equal diameter. It's not perfect. That on the outside edge, you can see it runs out oh probably six or seven thousandths and there's a bump in it and a dent in it so I'm expecting this machine had had an accident some time prior so you know what happens when you start having problems like that you forget all about the camera and you go working at your project so but in the end I did get this to fit reasonably well the threads are, are a little sloppier than I would have liked. I wanted it to be a nice uh, snug fit on there. 
but it does go on, bottoms out on our shoulder like we had intended, even though this shoulder is not perfect anymore. Uh, the run out I get out here now is about seven thousandths, so it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because when we, uh, when we put material in here, we're going to dial it in anyway, so, so we did get the job done. Let's take it off and I'll put the cover back on. So we did, uh, we took a carbide burr and did some relief around this, around this fiberglass cover so that we can, we can uh, screw our spider in place without removing the cover. And uh, we got ourselves about a quarter of an inch clearance here so that we can, uh, once we get material in, we can use our Allen wrench up top, dial it in and uh, straighten things out. Some projects, I guess, sometimes you have some trouble, sometimes you don't. Uh, we wound up with a usable part out of it, and uh, I guess in the end, that's all that really counts. A couple more projects I'm getting ready to do video on. Now, we've got a couple of gears here that we're going to need to make later on. Now, we're waiting on a gear cutter and uh, some materials for that, so when I get that one uh, straightened away, we'll, uh, we'll break out the camera again and get some footage of it, of course. Uh, thanks for watching this one for now, and um, we'll make another video soon.